What's up, everyone? 3D Prince 747 here, back again with another video. Um, so, I know I put out some TPU videos and was like, oh, yeah, it's super easy, super easy. So, I've been struggling with it. Let me get the camera close. See that? That looks horrible. That's garbage. And that print was laid like that. Um, I tried this. That fused to it. This was laid like that. Then I have this that still looks like garbage. And that was on the print bed like that. So I thought, so what am I doing different? Look at the edge here, how it's just nasty. Look at that. Can you see that? That's like, ugh. So I thought, what am I doing different than what I've done in the past? And the only thing that changed was using Orca Slicer instead of bamboo. Now, you know, Orca is an offshoot of bamboo. Um, it's not supposed to be any different than bamboo other than having additional features. Um, but look, this doesn't even pull off. Sorry. This doesn't even pull off. And I'm using the same top Z distance, 0.34, that I used for everything else, including the Batman cow. But it just, like, burned the print or something. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Same thing here. Like, it shouldn't even have done anything there because the supports were only over here. So why, why is that looking the way it is? Again, the only difference is Orca versus Bamboo. Now I can use this because it looks good on this side. This is where the stitching is. You can see that it looks good. But I thought, well, let me try again with the same TPU and see what it looks like if I slice it in Bamboo Studio and see if there's a difference. And I did that. And there's your difference. Look at that. The only difference is Bamboo Studio versus Orca Slicer. And Orca is supposed to be the better slicer because it has more features and does everything better, right? And, I mean, I've even talked about this, about how I'm moving towards Bam uh, Orca Slicer and how um, I've got the K2 Max on the way, so I'm going to be using Orca for that. But that kind of scares me that these are the exact same settings, and this is Orca, and this is Bamboo. That's crazy. And, you know, I thought, okay, well, maybe maybe um, it was just one time, you know, maybe it was a flaw. But that's why I printed all these different ones, and they all turned out. I mean, look at this. How can this – you can't even pull this off. It's so uh, – it's so attached, like it's burned on. But you saw me pull off the support in uh, the print from my uh, from Bamboo Studio, and it popped off easy. And, and everything is auto supports, 0.34 Z height, 3.34 Z top distance, 0.3 bottom Z distance. But you saw how easy it popped right off using Bamboo versus Orca. So I think I'm going to have to stick to, to bamboo at this point. Um, there's some stitching there that didn't kind of come out perfect. You might be able to see that um, in the light. Not a huge deal. You're not going to notice it. This is going to be for a Halloween costume. But still, that stitching all looks really good. That looks really good. Compared to 
that and this what is this this makes no sense to me because this wasn't even on the bed so i have no clue what even happened here it's like bubbled up or something and it's all the same tpu it's prylene tpu it's all the same um i dehydrated it for 24 hours before i printed with it like i always do um 25 percent infill um triangles but look this even bubbled through like this got so hot on this side that it bubbled through the print that's crazy that's never happened before i can't even get these off this is what i used to do uh what used to happen when i used to print with my cobra max before um i knew what was going on i didn't change any um top z distance or anything so everything just fused together and stuck um so lesson learned you know fast forward year and a half later and I'm using a 0.34 top Z distance. But this was a 0.34 top Z distance. And it's still... I'm not getting this off of there. Unless I ripped the print. There's no way... There's no way that that's coming off. And you can see I used the Mickey Mouse ears on the um, raft. for uh, Because Orca Slicer offers that. Bamboo doesn't yet. Um... So, yeah, so it sat like that. And there's actually no reason why this up here just looks like garbage. So hit me up in the comments below and let me know if you've run into this same thing where you've seen different slicers do um, different things, even though you're using the same settings. I mean, going from bamboo to orca is, that should be like no-brainer. Everything should, like, transfer over completely like identical from one to the other because they're pretty much the same software so is there something screwed up in orca that's causing this and that everything else is set to default settings um generic tpu um whatever speed the slicer recommends I don't change any of that the only thing I'm changing is tree supports automatic on the bed only and uh, the percent infill and the automatic supports and then adding the wrap and that's it everything else I kept the same from orca to bamboo let me know what you guys think. Um, please hit the like button so uh, YouTube knows that people are actually watching these videos. And if you're getting anything out of it, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm trying to um, get to uh, 200 subscribers. And I'm going to start um, doing some giveaways if I can get up there and, and get some views on these videos. So um, please hit that like button. Please hit the subscribe button if you can. And share the video. Um, it would mean a whole lot to me and also let me know that you want to see what I'm doing here. Um, yes, yeah, so that's about it. Um, as far as the mouse goes that I printed and posted the other day, I'm really happy with this. I'm not sure that I would spend another $7 on Maker World. I'd rather save my Maker Coins or whatever they're called and put it towards a gift certificate later down the road. Um, this doesn't function any different than like I showed you the other day the $13 mouse that I got on Amazon they're identical um, except the mouse from Amazon also has the side buttons like I showed you the other day um, so yeah but I mean this feels good it does everything I want it to do when I don't feel like using the rollerball um, so it's getting some dirt up in there and then what's on the printer now Easter's coming up, so I'm going to be selling these, um, I'm not selling them, giving them to, to friends, these um, eggs, 
Easter eggs with dragons in them. Um, I've got a bunch of friends that have little kids that would love these. And I printed it at 400% so that the big dragon can fit in there. No issue. Get in there. Um, and actually, I tried before, and it can fit two large dragons and two of the small ones. Um, again, this is a 400% um, with, I think, 4% infill. Um, it's pretty solid, so it's not going anywhere. I did receive some silk filament today, so I'll be printing a lot of new eggs and dragons using that. But, yeah, these flexi dragons are they're pretty awesome. Um, the kids that I give them to love them. Um, I had a customer come over, and he bought some stuff from me. And I had a, some of these sitting around. And I'm like, here, grab a couple of these for your kids. And he took them home to them, and, and they loved them. So I think you can find these on Thingiverse. And they're print in place. Don't need any supports or anything. Pretty easy to, to do. Um, don't take a long time, depending on how big you, you make them. But, yeah, these things are awesome. Anyway, anyway guys, please um, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, please. Let's get my name out there so we can help anyone that needs 3D printing help, anyone that will benefit from these videos. Um, and, yeah, I appreciate you all watching this, and I'll catch you on the next one. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. 3D Print 747, I'm out of here.